driving for me is it's just a form of expression of you know it, it might be pent up anger it might be pent up joy the free living the free will i get the free adrenaline the rush i get it's it's just uh very very gratifying for me to to drive with speed and it's always been something that i've, I've done as a hobbyist and then what kid never wanted to be a race car driver what I look for in a car is definitely performance, uh, what the car has to offer. Um, looks is a, is a bit of it, but you can, you can change that. You can work with the car. Thankfully, Subaru has an awesome car with the STI. The, the car is amazing. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty easy car to tune on, and the response you get back for the money you put into it is awesome. The main thing about this car, what, what's awesome about it, is the practicality. It's, it's very practical, it's, it's durable. My kids can jump in it and we can go to Legoland or wherever. And aside from the suspension being a little on the stiff side, it's, it's a very uh, comfortable car and I can go uh, hustle it through the canyons and I can also take it to the track and, and beat up on it for 20 minute sessions at a time and still just, you know, come back home and, and drive it day to day with no issues. I built up this car basically to showcase what can be done to a stock car without overblowing your budget. I wanted to build a car that was on a stock platform with minor bolt-ons, uh, very achievable for the common working man. Uh, modifications, I went basic, uh, bolt-ons, stock mods, uh, intake, exhaust, suspension, and uh, engine management. Bob access board. I love the way this car drives already. It drives nuts. I just want to give it more balls, you know? Uh, so we're just gonna put it in the shop and try to get try to squeeze a little bit more out of it, you know? It it, it drives insane already, but I I just I I wanna bump it up to an E85 tune. I chose to do this build with Cobb SoCal um, just because they're, I know they can make reliable power. They're very resourceful and they're close. Not saying that there will be any issues, but um, they're the guys to go to uh, whether or not you're having issues or not. Um, from what I've come to find out, you don't, you don't tinker around with uh, Joe Schmo. You go to the guy that uh, he calls when there's issues. All right, we have arrived at our destination. Oh uh, well, Bucky's coming in today. He's bringing in Sabrina, his 2013 STI, and we're basically taking the car to the next level. So we're gonna sit down with Bucky and go over what his goals are with the car this time around, and we're gonna go through some of the parts that we might recommend to him. Hey, Bucky, thanks for, again for stopping by at Cobb SoCal. Um, I'm sure you've met John and Danny, who we've worked yeah. on your car before. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what brings you around and uh, what we can do for you. Well, you guys did my tunes before. Um, you know, you did my street tune, you did my, uh, my racetrack tune. Basically, I just wanted to go to the next level with uh, possibly E85 tune, so that's when I called you guys up and we wanted to see where we would go. Outstanding. So I think the turbo that we all decided on for you was the Blausch Dominator 1.5 yeah. XTR. And I think uh, for purposes intended, that would be a good alternative for a safe uh, modification to right. get you somewhere around the 400 horsepower range uh, on E85. And uh, I would like John to kind of chime in and, and, and let me know the specifics of what we could get out of that turbo. Uh, so what you're looking at over your stock turbo is you're definitely going to pick up torque and power uh, with the 85 because on your original tune you were just 91. Right. Um, so you're probably looking at, you know, above 400 foot-pounds and probably around 380 to 400 uh, wheel horsepower. Nice. Uh, so it should be a very nice thing. Yeah, I wanted to get, I didn't want to go front mount in a cooler, you know, and go too big because I didn't want to lose that. I, I, don't, I didn't want to get too much lag. Okay, definitely. I know you track the car a lot, so having that top mount would definitely help, uh, you know, with spool up, exit speeds, uh, corners, things like that, um, which, you know, would be very beneficial on the track. Um, and as far as the other upgrades, um, the injector dynamics injectors are wonderful for alternative fuels like E85. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, 
their internals are uh, resistant to corrosion and things that E85 is prone to do. Um, so you don't have to worry about it as much uh, with stock injectors. Or obviously, you can't run stock injectors on E85, but other aftermarket injectors. Um, so I, injector dynamics is definitely the way to go. And the 1300s we picked for you are going to have the headroom for, to allow you to grow with them too as well. So that's, that's a good choice that we went with. Yeah, definitely. If you wanted to go bigger turbo in the future, um, you know, those 1300s will support upwards of 500 wheel horsepower on the oh, So we're already planning ahead and planning ahead. Yeah, like so it. exactly. <laughs> if you <laughs> want to step it up later, you always can use those same injectors. Yeah, because, you know, I, um, I tend to get bored sometimes. Yeah, everybody does. <laughs> So how far did you want me to push the car? I think power is important, but I think safety is more important. Um, I, I have to be able to drive to and from the track. Okay, definitely. So take that in consideration. Um, I'll probably find, cars Cars will tell you exactly when what they want. Um, so my tuning style is I'll, I'll push the car until it, it kind of gets a little angry at me and then I'll back it off a little bit from there. Um, and then, especially if you're gonna track the car, I like to leave a little bit more headroom for, um, you know, added heat and things like that that definitely happen out on the track. And Bucky, what kind of fuel are we tuning for? Um, I need it for street and race, so I would like a 91 tune, a race gas tune for the track, and then a nice E85 tune for, uh, for the street as well. Okay, are we doing three indi individual maps or are we doing a 50-50 blend for the beginning? Um, we'll, do, um, we'll do a 91 straight street and we'll do a 50-50 for the race, and then we'll do an E85. What do you think about the 50-50? 50-50 uh, works well. Um, definitely the added octane uh, rating will help out on the track uh, with detonation suppression. Um, but you got to make sure that when you do mix a 50-50 that it's equal every time. Danny, how long do you think this will take to uh, knock out? Uh, it'll probably take about a day and a half. It's something we usually do every day, so I don't anticipate anything going wrong. and it should be pretty straightforward. All right, guys, I am out of here. I just want to say thank you for taking care of Sabrina. I know she's in good hands, and uh, I will enjoy her gladly when I get back. So uh, make sure you guys don't forget my number and call me soon. So after talking to Bucky, he's on board with all the things we have planned for Sabrina. So we're going to go ahead and get started right away. Bucky just dropped off his car and I'm excited to start working on it. Uh, to get the power he wants out of it, we're going to change the injectors and the turbo. Bucky's upgrades are pretty straightforward for the most part. However, there are a lot of checks and balances that we have to go through to make sure that the car can handle these upgrades. Before installing any parts, we do an engine test, which is a compression and leak down to make sure the engine's in good health. It's important to do an engine test because if you add power to an unhealthy engine, it will cause damage. Now that we know the engine is healthy, we're going to go ahead and install the ID1300. So we're going to be replacing the stock injectors with aftermarket ones because the stock ones simply can't handle the power that we're going to be putting through the car. Um, especially with running E85, we're going to need larger injectors. The injector install is pretty straightforward. First I'll remove the inner cooler, remove some fuel lines and hoses, and remove the fuel rail. Once I have the fuel rails out, I can pull the old injectors out and put the new ones in. So the next part we'll be installing is the Blausch Dom 1.5 Turbo. And some of the key benefits is that it's going to push a lot more power through it than the stock turbo, and it won't taper off as quickly as the stock. So a turbo swap on a Subaru is relatively straightforward as long as you have the proper parts and the technical ability to do so. The turbo install is a little more involved than the injector. To install the turbo, the first thing I need to do is remove the heat shield and the downpipe. To remove the downpipe, I need to unbolt it from the turbo, the exhaust, remove the O2 sensor, and pull it out of the car. Now that the heat shield and downpipe are off, it gives me access to remove the oil lines and water line from the turbo so I can unbolt it from the uppipe and remove it from the car. Now that the old turbo's out, I'm going to go ahead and install the new Blouch turbo, water lines, oil lines, downpipe, heat shield, and intercooler, and I'm done. So Danny just finished wrapping up the installation of the turbo, the injectors, and a, you know some of the few supporting modifications. And now we're going to move the car to the dyno where John Heblin will be tuning the car. Tuning is important because without having a proper tune on the vehicle, it doesn't matter what parts you put on it, it just simply won't run right. 
Welcome to Cobb Tuning SoCal. This is our dyno cell, or my home away from home. Uh, a lot of you guys are used to seeing, you know, open dynos in garages, uh, backed up to garage doors, that sort of thing. But we've designed our dyno cell for maximum airflow. Uh, it's closed door. Uh, we have two giant intake ducts on the ceiling, which draw in fresh air, and which are pulled out by these two enormous exhaust fans that flow 23,000 CFM each. One of the really cool features about these front fans is that they vary their speed based on the roll speed of the car. So it helps simulate uh, road scenarios and things like that uh, much better than, say, a standard squirrel fan or you know, standard fan that would sit in front of the dyno. Over here we have our wideband O2 that I hook up to the exhaust. Um, I pretty much do that so it'll tell me whether the car's running too rich or too lean. And from there I can make the necessary adjustments to make the car run optimally on that fuel that it's currently on. Two things I monitor on Subarus are boost pressure as well as fuel pressure. Uh, I monitor fuel pressure because we're doing an E85 tune today and the demand for, on E85 is much greater than it is on normal gasoline, so I do this to make sure that the supply is adequate. So welcome to where the magic happens. Uh, this is a very vital part of the process as it kind of ties everything that we've already done together um, and you know it lets me optimize the car to run uh, well on the new parts of your battery. So once you start changing parts, it's very vital that you, you know, get a tune. Uh, the car doesn't know if you've changed intakes, downpipe, uh, you know, in this case, turbo or injectors. Uh, it's still running the OEM calibration, so it's gonna assume that you're running OEM parts. Uh, what this does is it kind of ties everything together, makes sure the car's running optimally um, with the most power possible in the safe range. The tools I'm using today are Access Tuner as well as the Access Port. Access Tuner allows me to modify the calibration uh, to optimize the power for the car. Um, the Access Port allows the end user to uh, you know, monitor gauges, uh, change maps, data log, that sort of thing. But in this case, I'm using it as a pass-through so I, Access Tuner can communicate directly with the car's ECU. As you've probably noticed, Bucky's still running the V2B. Uh, it's still a great unit, but we are going to upgrade him to a new Access Port V3. Uh, the latest generation is just packed with more features. Um, so we'll get that underway. It's a pretty quick and easy process. It only takes a few minutes, so let's get started. So we've got the new V3 all installed now. Um, I flashed on a base map for the ID1300s, uh, as well as the Blouse Dom 1.5. And, um, and the car seems to be idling great, uh, so let's get rolling here um, and see what she does. So the monitors I'm using today are air fuel correction and air fuel learning. Uh, that will let you know how far off the fuel trims are. Uh, optimally, they should be at or around zero, plus or minus five is generally acceptable. Uh, dynamic advanced multiplier, this should always be at one. Um, if it starts dropping, you know the car's knocking. Uh, engine speed, obviously, is RPM. Uh, feedback and fine knock learning will tell you if the car is knocking. Um, feedback is more of a uh, reactive ignition strategy. Fine knock is more of a proactive ignition strategy uh, based on knock. Manifold relative pressure is your boost. Uh, and mass airflow voltage will let me dictate where I would need to add fuel under closed loop. So what I'm doing now is a vehicle simulation. Uh, basically just checking out to make sure that uh, all the fuel trims and everything are in line. Uh, making sure the car is nice and happy, all the drivability stuff is, is stable. Uh, and then we'll iron out any spots that need help, uh, anywhere that fuel trims are unacceptable. Uh, but for the most part it's looking pretty happy so far. So. So what I'm looking at right now are my fuel trims. So I'm still running the same base map I loaded up earlier. Um, Injector Dynamics does a lot of excellent research in the injectors they make. So the data that I put in, I'm pretty confident in and I haven't altered it at all. So um, this is just with the supplied data that Injector Dynamics and Lance Lucas came up with. And uh, it's running great. Um, no real changes need to be made. It's only off by about 3%. So that's well within the acceptable range. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going, you know, cruise RPMs, what people generally like to cruise at. Uh, so I'm cruising at 75 right now, uh, you know, highway speeds. 
Uh, fuel trims are great. And what I'll generally do is I'll drop it down uh, certain RPMs just to get the fuel trims correct throughout the, the MAF range. Uh, and then we'll start by doing a wastegate pull after that. So you can see fuel trims are a little too high in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the amount it wants to the MAF scaling. So when I add this, you'll notice that this will come back down to it within near the acceptable range. Looks like it still wants a little bit more, so we'll add a little bit more. So you can see it now the air fuel corrections are down in the optimal range. You're not gonna be cruising at one, you know, you're not gonna be cruising at 3000 RPM all the time. So it's vital to know what the motor's gonna be doing, uh, you know, from 2000 to 5000 RPM, uh, just under cruising in light throttle conditions. Um, we'll focus on the wide open throttle stuff as soon as we've got all the cruise, cruising and uh, light throttle stuff uh, figured out. So now that we've completed all the drivability stuff, you know, the around town driving, you know, normal daily stuff, uh, we're going to move on to doing some wide open throttle pulls. Um, I've set it up to run wastegate pressure. Uh, this is a Dom one and a half, so wastegate on this is about 18 pounds. Um, so we'll see what happens here. So what I noticed right away was there a little was there a little feedback knock on uh, onset of the throttle, uh, and the car was extremely rich, uh, running in the high nines AFR. So what I'm going to do is take a look at the trace from the previous run. Uh, so you have black, which is your AFR. Um, Ten to one is the bottom. Twenty to one is the top. Uh, so you can see we're down, you know, below ten to one. So it's very rich right now. So ideally, I, on our crappy gas in California, uh, I'd like to run this about 10.8, which is just below this line here, uh, pretty much all the way across. Uh, depending on how it reacts up top, I may run it a little bit richer. Green here is boost pressure. Each one of these blocks is five PSI. So that's five, 10, 15, 20. So you can see we're right about 18 PSI. Um, orange is fuel pressure. This should rise and fall with boost pressure. You see how they fall, follow similar patterns. Um, they increase one PSI of fuel pressure for PSI boost uh, with a base pressure of 43 PSI. Um, so right here in this region, you're looking right around 60 to 61 uh, PSI of fuel pressure. And then red is horsepower, uh, blue is torque. So just for our checkout run here, we're looking at about 315 foot pounds, as well as about 325, 330 horsepower at 6,100 RPM. The car is making great power so far. Uh, so we'll see, you know, let's bump this torque up. Let's see if we can squeeze some more horsepower out of it. It's still very rich, so there's still a lot on the table. So now we've made those changes to the MAF scaling and the fuel table. Uh, so hopefully it'll lean out here a little bit and uh, we'll pick up some more power. Everything's looking good so far. A uh, little bit of knock there. So far, we'll wait until the graph pulls up here. Um, but I did notice a significant more amount of detonation that comes with leading it out. Um, it wasn't huge amounts, uh, so I stayed through it, but uh, it is something that I will have to, to touch up. So just in that first change we did with fuel, uh, we picked up another 20 wheel horsepower uh, just from how rich it was. So pretty much I'm just gonna have to repeat that process. Uh, do a lot of fine tuning here and there. There was some knock in that run that I didn't like, so I'm gonna have to go through and, and iron that out, make sure everything's nice and safe. Um, and then after that, you know, we'll start swapping fuels. We'll do a 50-50 mix of 191, and then we'll also do E85. Yeah, Bucky will be very happy. He's already made more power now on this on these two poles than he did on his stock turbo. Uh, so the horsepower increase will be pretty substantial. So we're done here. 
Uh, we just spent the last six hours or so tuning the car on three different fuels. The car made phenomenal power, way more than I was uh, anticipating to begin with. Um, but now we're just gonna take it out for a test drive, uh, make sure everything checks out, and uh, wait for Bucky to pick it up in the morning. Well, I'm out here doing uh, test drive in Bucky's car. Just making sure everything is up to snuff. Uh, you know, doing my quality control, making sure drivability is good. Uh, everything on the street is solid. Uh, just something I do with every car. Make sure everybody's happy with the end result so I don't get any surprises when the customer takes the car away. Uh, give it my sort of stamp of approval. So now that Bucky has a V3, we're logging, uh, we're monitoring six different things right now. I'm logging a whole slew of other things that I need. Uh, but these are the most important things that I need right now, uh, just to make sure the car's running well. Uh, it's not knocking, it's not hitting target boost. Uh, air fuel learning is where it should be. So far everything's great, the car's running well. Uh, no issues so far, and hopefully there won't be any at all. So we're getting ready to get on the on-ramp here and do a little bit of testing. Uh, do a little wide open throttle stuff here, and see how the car goes. Things are good when traction control is going off. Getting back on the on-ramp again, gonna do one more pull, make sure everything checks out, uh, then head back to the shop. Car feels very responsive. Uh, it feels like it makes a heap of torque. Uh, it's very quick. Uh, Turbo spool is great. Uh, the, this uh, Blausch Dom is definitely a wonderful turbo turbo for the Subaru guys. I think Bucky will be ecstatic. Uh, you know, he picked up substantial amounts of substantial amounts of power over his previous tune uh, with the stock turbo. So uh, I think he'll be pretty stoked when he comes and picks it up. I'm at Cobb SoCal. The guys have had my car for a couple of days. Um, I've been in contact with them. They told me a lot of good things. They've even whispered out a couple of numbers. So let's go in and see if the numbers are all true. Yo. What's up, dude? What's up, John? How are you? Good? Good, good. How's she do? Very good. Um, car made fantastic power, uh, more than we were anticipating. More? Yep, yep, definitely. Oh, boy. Instead of telling you the numbers, uh, let's just hop in and I'll show you. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. I'll go, no show. All right, Bucky, we're getting ready to do a dyno pull on E85 with the new turbo, new injectors, new Axis Sport V3. Yes. Um, see what she does. Let her rip. Felt pretty solid. Let's see what we got here. That was a strong pull. All right, Bucky. So here are the results. Uh, you can see peak torque right about 450, uh, 446 to be exact. Uh, peak horsepower, uh, 432 horsepower, uh, running right around 21 pounds. Uh, car seemed to run great. Everything checks out. Uh, made shitload of power. That is a lot. That is insane that you can get that much just from like a turbo injectors and. E85. Yeah, E85 is pretty awesome stuff. Uh, Bucky, last night I took it out for a test drive, uh, make sure everything checked out. Nice. Um, it ran beautifully, uh, but if something does arise, uh, you know, you can always take a data log with the V3, uh, okay. email it to me, and I can make adjustments from there. That's incredible. That's, uh, that's service with a smile right there. <laughs> All right, time to hand over the keys, man. I need to drive this thing. All right, this man. Is insane. It's all yours. All right. Gained an extra 100 horsepower. Wow. She's angry. 
she used to she used to throw a little fits, but now she's 100% angry. Wow. The torque was always there, but now the power backs the torque. Like it, now, it ha now she officially has balls. And that's scary. Just all I can say is she's angry. Like, still drives really normal, but man, when I when I get on the gas, it's the torque. It just doesn't stop. You know, it's just, it's just back with power now. Ah, uh, the sound is just pure adrenaline. You know, it just it just goes and it just keeps going. It's, it's like a it sounds like a super bike. Yeah, right now I'm just in kind of, I'm in shock actually how fast it feels and I'm just checking out all my gauges the entire time I'm driving, <laughs> just making sure everything's okay. Because it's seriously, it's it's that much faster. It's like it can't be right. Like something, something's gotta be wrong here. But it's all checking out. I got my new access port. I can look at knock. I can look at leaning, boost. I can do all that safely from my driver's seat. It's awesome. Man, that is insane. I can't believe how much power that put down. Like, it's above and beyond expectations. Listen, man, I'm so glad that you're happy. That's what we're here for. Man, I'm tripping right now. But hold on, there is one more thing I gotta check out. You don't mind, right? Not at all, go all for right, it. Sweet. definitely say the goal has been achieved well beyond its mark. I just don't want the tickets to back up the power I have now. Whoa. She is angry. It's just all I can say is she's angry.